All right, so I'm removing the exhaust camshaft sensor. And look what we have here. There's a piece of metal attached to the magnetic sensor. Now, it's normal to have metal shavings around the sensor, but not this. This is, looks like a paper clip almost. Let's grind it off of something. So let's clean this up. Ooh, that was the boat. Okay, nice and clean. So this is the exhaust side. Remind me, I'm gonna pull off the intake side now, which is this one here. Let's see what that looks like. This one's a little bit better. There's not that much shavings. Just clean it off. I'm just gonna swap them. Uh, yeah, I'm going to swap them. Uh, I mean, it could have been causing interference with the signal uh, because of all the shavings and that piece of metal. Mm -hmm. But if you look in these holes, it doesn't look too bad. And uh, I may clean it and pop it back in, but for now, I will swap them. So right now, this is the intake side, and that's going on to the exhaust side. Okay. Bit. Same size sensor. There you go. And then the exhaust is going over to the intake side. Now, doing this sort of diagnostic is based a very simple procedure where if you get one fault code of either intake or exhaust and not both at the same time then you can presume that one sensor is good and the other isn't therefore if you were to swap the bad one to the good side the intake side theoretically the fault would follow so instead of the exhaust being bad we're hoping that the int intake side will show up on the scanner the fault code, I mean. Okay, so make sure that's all the way in. Plug it. And make sure while you're doing all this that the key ignition is out the car, out the slot. And now that everything is all connected, we're going to clear the fault codes and run the engine again until the check engine light comes back on. And hopefully it'll show the intake camshaft sensor this time. Okay.